Hey guys, this is Peter, and I've got, well, I've got my Plex server running on top of T-Mobile Home Internet, finally. And, uh, well, it's been quite a trial, so I wanted to go through it, because I know a lot of you have been looking to do the same thing. You know, T-Mobile Home Internet is pretty great. Uh, you get some great download speeds, if you live in the right spot, and uh, also some great upload speeds. And immediately you start to think, what could I do with that kind of upload speeds? Uh, and, uh, well, I was pretty excited, because... I've used Plex for a long time, and with these kind of upload speeds, I could support a lot. But uh, there is a problem with all the telco providers. They all ran into the same problem. See, the internet didn't just become available on our phones. It was a slow progression. We went from 3G to 4G to 4G LTE. We're at 5G now, and it's working so well that they're starting to offer it for a home solution. But during that transition, the, well, phones only needed it temporarily. So they were sharing IP addresses because they were running low. IP fee, uh, IPv4 addresses are still running low. They're, uh, in fact, running out of them. But uh, IPv6 is going to fix a lot of that. But all the carriers are using something called carrier-grade NAT, or sharing uh, IP addresses when people are on the internet, because they were on really quickly. Let me get my email, boom. And then when you respond back, it didn't matter that it was different or that it had changed. But it kind of matters now when we're at home and we want to serve things like Plex. So really the solution seemed to be get a static IP. So I wanted to call and get a static IP. So I called their business folks and there are some business solutions with some great pricings out there. Um, but uh, they sent me this modem. And I was anxious to get this. This is the NC Go FX2000. It's a great modem. And even this is on their site, t mobile site. Look at all the bands it supports, 25 and 66, along with 71. Oh, even two. Really nice band coverage. But it does say right here that it supports two external TS9 connectors. Those are these. That would allow me to hook it up to my professional antennas. So that's why I got it. We did find out that those TS9 connectors are not routed to, well, anything that supports the bands that T-Mobile supports. So I would change that on their data sheet. I did pull the card, however, and put it in another modem. I put it in the Invisigig, which I've been talking about before. Look at the bands I'm getting here. Band 66, band 2, and band N41. This is 5G NSA Extreme. It doesn't work with 5G SA. For some reason, when you plug in this card into 5G SA, it doesn't like it because of, I, I believe it's because of the IP address. I tried switching the APN to the home APN and it still didn't work. But these are the kind of scores I'm getting. And so 537 up and 46, uh, sorry, 46 up and 537 down with the unit inside. I was getting 196 down and 14.8 up. I wanted to fix that up number. That up number is, well, that's what you're going to need when serving. So let's see. I went to uh, my router. I found a router that would support. Um, well, first thing I did was, was rever reserve the IP address of the PC or the uh, server that you want to serve Plex because you don't want it to be changing. So you can reserve this stuff. This is great stuff. If you have a printer and every time you reboot your network, you have to rerun your printer drivers and you've been doing that for years, this is how you fix it once and for all. You go and say that that MAC address, that MAC ID, this one, is uh, should always, if seen on the network, should always get this IP address and it'll work with it. So go ahead and reserve specific IPs because that will allow you to well, this case, I set up my server, and now this always has the same IP, which means when Plex runs on top of it, it always has the same IP as well. Then went ahead to port forwarding, and I just set up one little rule. I set this one up, and because this one has um, a lot of great features on it, it went and did the UPnP thing and filled out all the other ones. Okay, go to town. Uh, but I only filled out this one, and I filled it out using the rules from here. So I went to Plex, I clicked on uh, Remote Access, and I manually set the port address to be the... Plex always uses the 32400 uh, for, their, uh, for their address. Uh, it's kind of fixed. So I went ahead and my, made mine the same. Why not? So I gave it the fixed or the reserved DHCP address, 
192.168.0.2, and that port, and the uh, public port is my static address. That's my static IP. And there's the port that, uh, well, that Plex always uses. So now I have the two linked, and it seems to be working pretty darn good. So um, there, there's all my movies, and there, you can tell it's running for the applet. It's not just running on the server. And if I open my phone, here, I'm going to go ahead and share my phone. Why not? Can I cast my phone from here? No, I'm not on the same network. Oh, okay, I'll just hold up my phone and show it to you. My phone's working great. I am on a different Wi-Fi network. I have a couple of Wi-Fi networks running around here. But if I was running on the same network that was over there and was able to share my screen, it'd be cheating because the data could come right over the top. But you know now that when I pick a movie, I'm going to pick this one. It's called Arctic... And I'm going to just resume it. And this is coming over a completely different network. I made, was watching some videos at the, at the beach the other day, just making sure that it worked. This is great. So finally it's working. We're able to take movies and serve them over our networks. And what did it take? Well, it took a static IP address. And then it took reserving everything. So nothing could move. You got to think static all the way through. You got to think, oh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take my static IP and then reserve whatever is serving my Plex. If it's a PC, give it a, a static IP. Find out what your Mac ID is and go ahead and make a static for it internally. And for me, it was my server, my Synology NAS. That's a great product. And then I, I that's my Fair, Fairwood server. It always has the same address. I run Plex on this. It runs a lot of different things, but Plex is definitely here. And when I click it open, it comes up like, well, comes up like this a lot. But then I click on the wrench, and it brings me to this screen. I go down and click to remote access, and you go ahead and bind the two together. And it works. Works pretty well. Anyway, uh, there's still a few little things. Uh, the, sometimes when it's been a long time and it goes into shutdown mode, I have to revive it, but uh, it has been working pretty darn good. So I'm trying to find out all the little ins and outs, but I'd say I've got it working 90%. There you go, guys. Hey, uh, thanks so much for watching. I did hear from some T-Mobile folks that you can get a static IP with the home version, but you have to speak to the right people. You might even have to go and speak to the business side to get them to say, yeah, you can do that and get them to transfer you back. It wasn't easy. I spent a tremendous amount of time on the phone. So if you're not into it, you may want to wait it out, but it is possible. There you go, guys. Hey, thanks so much for watching and um, give this thumbs up. This is the kind of stuff that you uh, you value. And we'll catch you in the next one. We'll talk to you soon.